Hey y'all, Panzer Dragon here, and today I want to bring you top 5 best mid laners for solo queue for patch 4.10. Recently, some champions have been changed like Nidalee and LeBlanc, and so currently my opinion on the top 5 best mid laners for solo queue have been changed. And recently there's been a champ that's becoming more popular these days, so let's go ahead and let's get started. So first up is Fizz. I feel like Fizz is going to be like the new replacement for LeBlanc, when people want to play these high bursty champions who can one shot people. I could honestly put someone like Cassidy or Syndra here, but I feel like Fizz is really more useful than those two, and I feel like his damage is really high. He does have a greater team fight than Cassidy does, and he has more survivability than Cassidy because he has an invulnerability with his pull, and he just hits like a truck with his abilities. He also has an initiation with his fish, and most mid laners don't really have an initiation, so that's a really stand up point for him. And his late game is really beast mode too, because 1, he's hard to kill. 2, he has lots of damage, and 3, he has initiation. And also you can like WQ someone late game and bring him down from 100% to 25%. So yeah, he's pretty good right now. The only problem is he has to play aggressive early game to win his lane. And so being aggressive can make him vulnerable for ganks. And on the other side, he's also really good to gank for, since he does have a lot of CC and mobility. And at number 4, we do have Yasuo. So Yasuo is becoming an ever so more popular pick these days in solo queue. And it might have to do something with the Doran's Blade changes and the IE changes. Or maybe people just realize that he's really powerful with Static Shift plus Blade Rune King. Either way, I feel like he's really good at the moment. And Yasuo only lacks certain problems like his early game. Um, he doesn't really have that power spike until he gets like Blade Rune King or Static Shift. He has some tough matchups that he has to be careful of. And obviously an AD mid is pretty bad if you have an AD top 2 because then the enemy will just build all armor and you're kinda screwed late game. And another point is to make is people pick Yasuo without knockups. Honestly, if you really want to make Yasuo really efficient, you have to have a team with at least some knockups other than just Yasuo. Other than that, there's definitely a lot of pros about Yasuo. First off, you can farm a ton of minions. His wake clear is really good as he does have a lot of damage. And I think everyone has seen this before, but every time Yasuo is in the game, he always has more CS than the average laner. I always see Yasuo's these days have really high CS. And second off, if you're ahead as Yasuo, you'll probably win every team fight if you get a good knockup. If someone lands a knockup onto the enemy squishy, they're probably gonna die. And just that can probably win you the team fight. So yeah, he's a pretty good assassin, and then he can just clean up the team fight since there's no damage to take him down. And if you do have a reliable knockup to combo with Yasuo, you'll probably win every team fight. Just remember, he's kind of useless if there is no initiation for him to get in. The only thing he can do is split push and 1v1 other laners. Alright, so number 3 we do have Twisted Fate. Alright, so I do have lots of pros for TF. I really like him on my team and especially if you have a good TF, he will carry your team. Alright, so what's good about him? First off, he has the ability to gank people around the map since his ult is semi-global. This is really useful for killing people and picking people off. And especially if you are fed, you can 1v1 everyone and of course pick people off by yourself. And he does provide hard CC with his 2 second stun gold cards. So it's really easy for people to follow up on his ganks. This ability is what makes him really strong right now is the semi-global ultimate. If you know how to make use of it, then you're obviously going to be really strong. He can also split push and keep a lane pushing, and so that can put pressure onto the enemy team because someone has to deal with that. And also I heard a quote from Hai, if you go even in CS in lane, you automatically win the lane since you do have that passive which gives you more gold. And with more gold you can have more presence around the map since you do have that global ultimate. He also has pretty good wave clear, so pushing lanes is not a problem for him. But he does have some bad things about him, like his early game, he's so vulnerable and weak, uh, he can't trade with most mid laners, he's easily camped, and if you shut him down early, his map presence is kinda lowered since he doesn't feel that strong at the moment. And he really only has single target burst damage. He doesn't really have any game changing spells like Zig's ultimate or Yasuo ultimate. He only has like 3 damaging abilities and they're all really single target. Other than that, he can be a real threat if he gets fed. He's also really vulnerable to assassins who get onto him first and he doesn't really have any escapes to get away from them. Next up we do have Ziggs. So what makes Ziggs stand out from the others? So Ziggs right now is probably the only champion who has high poke and does a lot of damage with it. Since Nidalee was taken out of the poke game, he seems to stand out the most if you need some sort of sieging potential. Another thing that stands out the most for Ziggs is that he can delay games so hard since he does have that wave clear and his late game is really good too. And let's say your bot lane lost to someone like Caitlyn. Now the enemy bot lane comes to middle and now you're here to defend it. And now guess what, they can't siege it because you have wave clear. Thus delaying the game so your team can catch up. That's one of his best strengths in the game. And like for cons, he doesn't really have any weak points of the game, he's strong every point of the game. His team fighting is pretty good and he does have an escape for those nasty assassins. And at number 1, 
big surprise, it's Kale. So Kale is, uh, do I have to repeat everything from my last video? Uh, no, I'm just gonna sum up my thoughts about her. If you get fed early, you automatically win the game because her mid game slash late game is pretty insane. Maxing heal second is really broken. And if you suck early game, you're still useful because you have utility from your ultimate and heals. Oh, you want to initiate on my squishy Kogma? Just kidding, I'm going to ultimate for the duration that he's stunned, and then the damage from your team is gone. But in all seriousness, Kale's OP until she's nerfed. You can literally just abuse her until then. Just remember, the only reason I feel like she's OP right now is just because her late game wins you the game. Other mid laners who were considered for this tier list were Syndra and Orianna. They definitely both have their strengths. I know Syndra can carry a game, but you have to be really good at Syndra to play her. And Orianna, I feel like she's really good. But if she gets fed, I don't feel like she can carry the game as much as the champions I listen to this video. I just don't really see that much carry potential from her. Anyways, that concludes my video. Hope you guys enjoyed my patch 4.10 mid tier list. Thank you for watching. Check out my other tier list. I'm going to be doing all of them again for patch 4.10. Make sure to like this video and to subscribe to get a notification when the other videos come up. And until then, I will see you guys next time.